Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to this new MOVE session today. Thank you for being uh, with us today. We will be talking about the eFerry Ellen, um, about maritime transportation. Um, we will talk about the, um, the missions, the demonstration, the uh, efficiency, economic efficiency. And for that, uh, we will have with us today Ani Korchari. Please let me know, Ani, if I'm saying your uh, surname okay. Yeah, yeah. She is a research associate at the Hellenic Institute of Transportation at the Center of Research at and Technology, Hellas. She holds a degree in civil engineer from the Aristotle University of Thessalonica and a master in business administration from the University of Macedonia, Greece. She is currently a PhD candidate in the area of railway transportation with her thesis focusing on railway freight transport between Europe and Asia. She has been working in the Institute since 2005 and has participated in numerous research projects and transport studies, while she is author of many scientific papers. She is in charge of the laboratory dedicated to rail transportation systems and services of the Hellenic Institute of Transportation, uh, focuses on the organization of further development of railway transport in order to ensure radically improved railway systems that can act as a valuable and environmental friendly alternative to other transport modes, as well as part of an integrated multimodal transport chain. Uh, she also holds a past experience in mobility management, seasonal transport demand management, intelligent transport system, as well as electrification in the maritime trans transport sector. So thank you so much. Welcome, Annie. Thank you so much for being with us today. I think the topic is very interesting for us. It's very new, but I think it's also very relevant to uh, Latin American region, to the Caribbean region. I think we can learn a lot about your experience. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for all the information you're about to give us. And the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the invitation. It was uh, an honor, a great honor to me. Uh, so, as you said, I represent the Hellenic Institute uh, for Transport, uh, which is part of the Center for Research and Technology, LS. It's one of the biggest uh, research institutes, research centers, actually, in uh, Europe, uh, and one of the two biggest uh, research centers in Greece. Uh, today, we are going to talk about uh, Ellen, the first all-electric ferry that was uh, constructed uh, in the framework of uh, the EU project called eFerry. So uh, the contents of the presentation, we will have a few words about the history of the project, uh, a, a quick glance at the technical characteristics of Ellen and the operation of Ellen. Uh, and then we will see through the evaluation, which uh, included the technical, the environmental, the economical and the societal evaluation of uh, the electric ferry. Now, uh, a few words about the history of the e-ferry project. In 2013, a few maritime professionals on the island of Aru, which is located in Denmark, had the idea to build a, an all-electric uh, emission-free ferry in order to replace the, the one that was actually that was in, used at that point, which was a diesel ferry, an aging diesel ferry, and used on the original route between the, the port of uh, the island of Aru, named Sobi, and Finsam on the island of Als. In 2014, uh, there was a, a feasibility study that was conducted uh, named Green Ferry Vision that was supported by the European Regional Development Fund. And this presented the scope and the outline of uh, the, the project, the, their dream actually. The goal of this dream was to create a vessel that would cover an, uh, an unprecedented range for an electric ferry. Uh, up till then, the only electric ferry that uh, was in operation was Norled in Norway, which had a range of five nautical miles, so they dreamed of uh, uh, far exceeding this uh, range. And also, they wanted to, to have a ferry that would not rely on fossil fuels and uh, would not have uh, not even an emergency backup system. So in 2015, uh, the municipality of Aro, along with other partners, among which was the Hellenic Institute for Transport, managed to find the much needed funding uh, through the EU's Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Project. The goal of this project was uh, to design, build and demonstrate a fully electric powered green medium sized ferry for medium range connections. It started in June 2015 
The initial duration was 48 months, but uh, after some delays that we experienced uh, in the construction, the design actually, and then the construction, uh, we were granted an extension of a year, which is uh, unprecedented as well for the commission. Uh, the extensions are usually about three to six months that are given to projects. But uh, given that they wanted us to have a full demonstration and a, a good evaluation of the ferry, they granted us a whole year. So uh, the funding that we received was around 15 million uh, euros and the total cost for the project that came also from uh, funds from the company was uh, reached 21.3 million euros. All in all, we, we were 10 partners that participated in the project. And as I said, there was this built on the Green Ferry Vision Project, the feasibility study that we mentioned before. The goals of the project were two. The first one was to design and build an innovative vessel that will be 100% electric and uh, with its main characteristics being energy efficient design in comparison of lightweight equipment and materials and state-of-the-art electric-only systems with automated high-power charging system. And on the other hand, to get the opportunity to validate the feasibility and cost-effectiveness of uh, this endeavor, of the concept of the e-ferry uh, e project and the electric ferry to the industry and the ferry operators through the demonstration of the vessel's ability to cover distances of up to 22 nautical miles on connections in the Danish part of the Baltic Sea, that are currently operated by conventional driven ferries. Uh, a few words about the technical characteristics of uh, Ellen. Uh, I should note at this point that the name of the ferry is Ellen, and this comes from uh, the first uh, ferry that was uh, that operated in the specific route, and also combines the EL, which is uh, which are the first uh, letters in the word electric. So, uh, Ellen is a single-ended drive-through rural passenger ferry. It can carry 31 cars or four trucks and eight cars. Uh, in the winter, it can carry 147 passengers and the, in the summer, 196 passengers. It has a length of almost 60 meters. Uh, the battery capacity is uh, 4.3 megawatt per hour and the charging capability is four, four megawatts. The dimensioning of uh, the battery capacity and the charging effect were based on the, the requirements that, was, that were set by the operator in order to have uh, an ordinary ferry operation on the route up to 22 nautical miles that would uh, operate uh, at least seven trips per day uh, during the operating hours, which are from 6 a.m. in the morning to 12 uh, at night. Uh, as we said, there is no backup, backup emergency generator. Uh, and so for this reason, we need to have a capacity of two times 400 kilowatts per hour in order to reserve, have to be reserved at all times for uh, emergency purposes. The system has been designed and I mentioned so that the Ellen uses an estimate of uh, just over one third of its nominal capacity, which accounts to 1,600 kilowatts per hour on a trip of uh, two nautical miles and charge a little less um, up to 1,300 kilowatts per hour than what has been used on a trip during the 20 to 35 minute harbor stay. So uh, Ellen leaves the charging harbor, which is on the island in the morning. It has been fully charged and gradually this uh, capacity diminishes. And by the end of the day, it will be around to 30% of its nominal capacity. And then a full time uh, uh, charging takes place during the night and in the morning, uh, we start uh, from the beginning. Here you can see the simulated values that have been calculated for the e-ferry dimensioning of the battery capacity and the charging effect. And uh, moving on to the operation of Ellen. This started um, some two years ago. Now Ellen has been in actually less, around one and a half years, Ellen has been in operation. Uh, so, uh, the operator, which is uh, Aero Ferries, uh, received the approval from uh, the Danish Maritime Authority to operate Ellen in the southern Danish area of the Baltic Sea on the routes uh, from Sobi, which is the port on the island, to Finsap and to Faber. The distance for both of these routes is a little bit below 22 nautical miles for the return trip. 
the route from Sobi to Finsav is uh, slightly longer than the, uh, than the route from Sobi to Parbok. And for this reason, this is the one that was used for the demonstration and evaluation in order to get the more challenging route to be tested. Here you can see uh, at the bottom the, the island of Aro, which is connected to the two ports, to Finsam and Farburg. This is the route in which Ellen is operating currently. Um, the onshore facilities are currently available in all three ports, Sobi, Finsam and Farburg. Uh, each one of the harbors has been equipped with an automated mooring system in order to achieve faster docking and less crew work. However, charging is only possible in the home harbor with, uh, of Sobi, and this way we achieved uh, uh, less uh, investment costs because we didn't have to get uh, charging facilities in all three ports. Uh, for this reason, the, um, Ellen has to stay in the Sobi harbor for a longer time than, the, than in Finsam and Fabrook. Here you can see the e-ferry prototype charging system, which is a semi-automated uh, plug connection placed on the onshore ramp and hence charging from the fore end of the ferry. Uh, the green uh, facility that you can see on the right is actually the charger. Moving on to the technical evaluation. Uh, as I said, the evaluation of the ferry was built uh, around the four uh, pillars, the technical, the environmental, the societal and the economical evaluation so that we could uh, test all aspects in which uh, Ellen uh, aimed to thrive. So uh, in terms of energy efficiency and consumption, uh, the energy efficiency of the total electrical system uh, is 85% from grid to propeller which is more than twice as high as the efficiency of a typical diesel ferry. I should note at this point that currently in the specific route, there is uh, still a diesel engine ferry. So we have Ellen and the diesel engine ferry, and this gave us the opportunity to make all the comparisons during the demonstration and testing uh, process. Uh, at an average consumption of uh, 1,600 kilowatts per hour per return trip, uh, used from batteries, Ellen performs better than projected in the pre preliminary studies. There is a low average energy consumption per trip in combination with an available, available battery capacity of more than 3.8 megawatts per hour and a fast charger. Uh, this proves that Ellen is indeed a valid, can actually comprise a valid commercial alternative to traditional diesel and diesel electric uh, propelled ferries, also on ferry routes which are uh, longer with longer distances and high frequency of daily connections. Uh, Ellen performs five return trips per day, at least, and uh, this uh, goes uh, up to seven trips per day in the summer. With high reliability and regularity, using its higher speed than its predecessors, uh, in order to compensate for charging breaks of uh, 20 to 40 minutes during the port stays in Sobi. Uh, these return trips are kept within one 14-hour cruise shift only, uh, taking account the rest hour regulation, uh, resulting to crew cost optimization. Uh, as we said, Ellen stays at night in the port of Sobi, charging for the next day, uh, but can actually perform up to seven return trips in the peak season if that is needed. And another cruise shift is added, uh, in this case, to the daily schedule. Uh, charging plug, uh, which was developed by Mod Mobimar and charging station developed by Danfoss Editor, deliver up to 4 megawatts of power during the port stays. The plug is located on the ferry ramp, uh, this way making the system very reliable also during changes in water level. Um, and several extremes have been tested during the demonstration successfully. Uh, so Ellen achieved all uh, the initially set technical goals. The hydrodynamical wave system generated from the vessel speed is really low. Um, I really hope that some of you could get the opportunity to test this because it's really, really impressive how it doesn't uh, uh, have any, it doesn't uh, create any dis disturbance to the passengers either from wave nor from noise. Uh, this is further supported by the low energy consumption measured in the demonstration period, even at uh, relatively high speeds. The loading condition of the ferry has an impact on energy demand. The forward battery room design trim ended up being a little bit too much on the nose, as we said. Uh, so some balancing in the aft ship showed to be optimal in normal operation. 
In the case that we have drugs on board, uh, these are placed up so that ballast can be reduced. And the evaluation analysis uh, didn't show any significant increase in the proposal cons consumption when Ellen is heavily loaded. The weather conditions impact energy demand of the ferry as in the case of all other ferries. And finally, the offset by headwind and head sea, though, will typically be gained back on the returning leg where these effects support the propulsion. Going on to the environmental impact of uh, sailing with a fully electric ferry, we had uh, a very thorough life cycle analysis uh, based on which uh, the difference between a fully electric propulsion system and a conventional diesel vessel or even a diesel electric vessel is significant in terms of overall environmental impact over a ferry's lifetime. Uh, this is regardless if the ferry prototype is operating with electricity that comes from the grid, the Danish grid in this case, or from green energy sourced only from wind energy, because this was the initial plan in uh, Denmark to have uh, electricity only from green energy sources. It was achieved at uh, a very high extent, but not uh, 100%. Uh, and this is also the case when considering mineral resources uh, used for LN batteries and the resources employed to produce them. Uh, I should note at this point that all uh, pillars of the evaluation are available, are uh, public, so you can, after this presentation, of course, you can uh, pose any questions you need, but you can also go through it yourself and gain uh, much more information that be, is being presented here and actually proving what is said here. Uh, here you can see the main results of the life cycle analysis. With a blue color, we have the e-ferry running on country mix. Uh, then we have uh, the e-ferry running on wind energy, the conventional diesel ferry with the gray color. And finally, uh, the yellow color uh, deals with the conventional so low sulfur diesel. As you can see, uh, the e-ferry, either using country mix or the wind energy, is uh, far better in all the 13 uh, criteria that were set in the life cycle analysis. Uh, now, uh, the operational evaluation of the environmental impact. Uh, the operator chose to use certified green electricity for charging Ellen, despite the additional cost that this would accrue compared to the de standard Danish grid mix, including about 40 to 50 percent electricity generated from fossil fuels. The green certificates were the best way to ensure that Ellen is entirely emission free in a more global perspective. Uh, as we say, green certificates correspond to extra payments to renewable energy producers, putting up a new supply of wind, solar or hydropower to the grid. Uh, so based on the evaluation, we had first the best available technology. We compared uh, Ellen to that, which was a new build uh, diesel electric ferry. Uh, so compared to that, Ellen saves the environment from 2,520 tons of CO2 emissions, 14.3 uh, tons of uh, NO2 emissions, 100.5 tons of sulfur emissions. Uh, I, I don't want to go very much into details to these numbers. Uh, you can see that uh, both compared to the best available technology and compared to an older existing ferry, uh, Ellen is uh, very, very good for the environment. And overall, the life cycle analysis showed that even when taking into consideration the resources needed for producing batteries, the e-ferry prototype Ellen overall fares significantly better than its alternatives. Now, uh, going to the what is uh, of interest to the industry and uh, the operators, which is always economy and the financial uh, information, we had uh, an economic evaluation. We again compared Ellen to the best available technology, a diesel electric ferry and a, a conventional diesel ferry. So uh, the results, we have of course, higher investment costs for building fully electric ferry, but these have been found to be compensated for after just four to eight years of operation, even when taking into account the cost of the charging station and the potential necessity for replacing the battery pack uh, twice over the vessel's total lifetime, which is uh, considered 30, time, 30 years. So uh, the higher investment costs are, are paid for early, and for the remainder of the ferry's 30-year lifetime, the operator can save around 24 to 36% in operating costs compared to operating a diesel or a diesel-electric ferry. 
here in the table you can see uh, the total cost, the operational cost per year for uh, five trips per day for 360 days per year. Uh, you can see that uh, both for the eFerry prototype and the eFerry series, which is uh, in case we decided to create a new ferry now, uh, the operational costs are uh, far less uh, than the new diesel electric ferry and even, even less than the existing diesel ferry. The savings uh, from the operational costs come from, first of all, the lower energy cost which is achieved due to the better overall energy efficiency of the fully electrical battery drivetrain. We have uh, lower crew costs. Uh, E-Ferry has been approved to sail only, uh, to sail without a marine engineer. And actually the crew is only three people in uh, winter and four people in the summer. Uh, so instead the service engineer takes care of uh, running maintenance, which is less demanding with the simplicity and few moving parts of the battery drivetrain compared to fossil fuel engines. And also automa automation plays a huge role for the operational cost savings, especially when compared to the existing diesel, diesel ferry now running in the specific route, uh, which was used as a second peer in the analysis. Um, the technology, uh, contrary to what is being said uh, these last uh, few months, is constantly becoming cheaper. The battery systems were a major contributor to Ellen's initial investment costs. Uh, the decrease in this cost has been more than half the price in the project period. The cost of building Ellen in 2020 with current battery prices compared to the prototype cost incurred by the ferry parts would be around to 20% less if we decided to build the ferry now, actually from uh, 2020. Uh, in the future, the charging systems uh, are expected to be installed in some ports as a part of the common infrastructure. So, so that would not be a burden for the operator or for the uh, industry that would decide to purchase an electric ferry. Uh, this is an incentive, of course, for the operators because uh, otherwise they would have to pay for the infrastructure themselves. The standardization efforts that are being exercised already and economies of scale start to apply as environmental requirements dictate uh, the transition away from fossil fuels. And finally, the cost of the batteries and their replacement is not the main cost driver, as emphasis should be put on the cost of the charging system, grid infrastructure and other parts of the drivetrain. Finally, uh, the last part of the uh, evaluation uh, regarded the passenger satisfaction on one hand and the perspectives of the industry on the other. First of all, the passenger satisfaction, we gave uh, out uh, questionnaires that were filled in by the passenger on board the ferry. Uh, also, many people around Europe, um, schools, uh, researchers, uh, industry representatives and uh, Many, many journalists uh, came to the island in order to experience uh, the e-ferry themselves. And they, they also participated in the evaluation. So we had uh, quite a big sample for the passenger satisfaction uh, survey. Uh, on, all in all, passengers welcomed the emission-free ferry and its sailing characteristics with uh, great enthusiasm. Uh, the environmental benefits uh, were highly rated by the passengers who stated uh, to be either extremely satisfied or very satisfied with Ellen in operation. They also rated highly the much less, much less noisy and completely smoke-free operation. It's very, very uh, impressive the fact that you can sit uh, on board the ferry and uh, not smell anything. Uh, it's uh, very, very fascinating. Uh, also, they rated safety, comfort, and uh, travel time, which has been reduced by more than 20% compared to the diesel it replaced, as either extremely satisfying or very satisfying. Coming to the perspective of the industry, uh, all of the partners uh, representing the industry, as well as uh, they sub their subcontractors that contributed to the design and build of uh, Ellen, participated in the survey. Uh, all of the companies uh, that were involved, uh, they mentioned that they expect new jobs to arise in their organization due to the introduction of electric propulsion systems in maritime transportation. New job roles to be created uh, relate to new building departments, installation of battery DC systems on electric ships, installations of power systems and batteries.
product managers, lead engineers, etc. And uh, consensus has been achieved among the partners that they have to continue the attempts towards electric propulsion of ferries to conduct in-depth in depth research as well as to improve the regulatory framework. This last part is really uh, important and difficult to achieve uh, so as to further penetrate uh, the market uh, with the electric ferries. So as a conclusion, we can say that the e-ferry project has great potential to be the innovative catalyst to accelerate and drive the acceptance of using innovative methods in future electric ferries. Now, uh, as a final part of uh, this presentation, I have included uh, the market potential of e-ferry. I should mention that this was conducted prior to the finalization of the e-ferry when we formulated the business plan. Uh, so, uh, some data may be outdated, but this doesn't mean that it is not valid, actually. Uh, what will be said uh, hereafter is uh, even more true now. So, uh, we came to the result that the electric ferries, despite their environmental advantages, pose uh, serious limitations in operation, operation range. This is something that we knew from the beginning. Um, the propulsion challenge met by ferry is that each sailing is up to 10.7 nautical miles and the vessel can complete two sailings. The market analysis that you will see uh, in the next slides for the positioning of the e-ferry was based on the fact that the distance that the ferry can cover without being charged is 22 nautical miles. This was actually done, uh, it was achieved uh, with a final uh, e-ferry prototype and Ellen which is currently who is currently operating in Denmark. Uh, so uh, we identified the number of routes that are up to 22 nautical miles in uh, Europe in three markets, the Baltic, the North Sea and the Mediterranean. Uh, then we identified the number of vessels that are currently operating there and the ones that are due for renewal now and the ones that will be due for renewal in 10 years. Uh, based on the strict rules already in force or expected by 2020, this has already happened, ensuring environmental protection and limitation of uh, greenhouse gas emissions, it is easily concluded that uh, Ellen has significant market potential in these uh, three markets of the European Union. Uh, coming to the worldwide market potential of uh, Ellen, uh, we identified not, also, not only the routes uh, which are on up to 22 nautical miles, but also the ones that uh, are up to 36 nautical miles in the sense that uh, it is almost certain that in the, in the coming years, the industry partners will uh, achieve the optimization of the battery and the range of the e-ferry will be increased to 36 nautical miles, even higher. Uh, so uh, there is also a, a good market potential for Ellen here in the Americas, Central Asia, Southeast Asia and the Pacific. Uh, finally, as a case study, we had uh, we uh, identified the potential operation in the African ferry market. Uh, so as we said, the ferry entails a high cost of investment and before attempting to enter the African market, it should be investigated if the countries, operators, communities can undertake the cost. Uh, given that uh, the audience today is mostly coming from the Caribbean, I think that the same goes for you. Uh, it's very important to identify in the beginning whether all the interested parties and the, um, and the involved uh, partners are actually interested in this endeavor because it entails uh, huge costs and, of course, huge benefits. Uh, the environmental benefits are indisputable and comprise the basis for any marketing attempt in Africa. We identified two cases of ferry operations for which Ellen is an eligible candidate. Uh, and these are the domestic, uh, here you can see also the map. It is the domestic line operated by KFS in the route from Mombasa to Likoni and to Montoge which is three to four nautical miles in total and the connection between Dar es Salaam in Tanzania and Kigaboni, which is uh, less than one nautical mile. Um, uh, this ferry operation, the Mombasa Ligoni, is a service that often faces problems due to the age of the operating ferries, which is uh, with the most uh, recent one occurring in uh, March uh, 2020. So, uh, 
we can see that also in the African market uh, there is a huge uh, penetration potential for the e-ferry market, for the electric ferry market. So coming to some concluding remarks, uh, the ferry sector has known signs of recovery from the financial crisis during the last three to five years. Uh, there are, of course, several challenges to be faced in the coming years related to the environmental policies, also related to the COVID-19 situation. Uh, other challenges include fluctuating energy prices and the everlasting need for sustainable, affordable and safe vessels. The operation of electric ferries could comprise a viable solution in many cases for these uh, challenges. Uh, for the maritime companies searching for new vessels, one of the most important issues is the cost of ownership. Economically beneficial yet highly polluting diesel engines and cheap heavy fuels are often topping their list uh, for maritime power generation. The shift towards cleaner and fossil fuels and renewable fuels is foreseen, however. And this adoption will depend mainly on their availability, the infrastructure, the environmental impact, the safety, price and the reg re regulations and technical suitability. The market analysis proved that there is a wide range of routes in which Ellen could be very competitive and the further battery optimization will further widen this market potential. To sum up, electric ferries are suitable for standard routes making trips of specific and known length, which ideally last about three times the duration of the trip. They are also ideal in the cases of ports that are located near residential areas or wildlife areas as they do not uh, pr produce any uh, noise or wake and this way protect people and the wildlife of the vicinity of the route. The electrification of ports where they dock is also considered a prerequisite. Uh, so uh, this was all. I don't know if we have time for uh, a video. Can we play this now? Can hear. I don't know if we can see the images now. <laughs> okay, there we go. Yep. So and I don't know if there is sound to the video because we cannot hear it. Yeah, there is sound. Okay, I don't know, we cannot hear it, but I guess that the, the images are uh, showing the info, so that's okay. It's a public video anyway, so anyone can watch. Okay.
so much for um, for all the information and all the experience here. Uh, also the video, all the um, seeing the images after knowing all the facts is uh, really rewarding, I guess. Um, I would like to to um, to sum up your your presentation in various things that that caught my eye. Uh, the first one is that the project came from the very, very, very beginning from the project, just from the first idea of, you know, uh, we should have an electric ferry to having the ferry on site. So from the design of the ferry, the building of the ferry, the uh, installment on, of, of everything. So I think that that must have been a really, really uh, long and complicated project, but uh, so good that, that, that you have done it, I think that there is a similarity between the, the, um, the countries in the northern uh, in the northern Europe uh, regarding the islands, the multiple islands that they have to connect, and uh, the Caribbean. So the Caribbean, uh, most of the countries the Caribbean, the Caribbean are multi-island countries. So they will have these ferries going back and forth between the islands uh, many times a day. So I think that that will actually connect uh, the idea uh, of both of both uh, regions in the world, I must say, um, I I was I was um, ready to ask you the question of um, if the ferry will be charged in more than one port. But you also you already said that that the charge night. Um, I, I I I have uh, some questions about that because I, I I just don't know that much about ferries. Uh, the other thing that I want to point out is the passenger satisfaction. I think that that is the the uh, very important point of doing all these projects. That, uh, we will have uh, something that's mentally beneficial for everyone, but also that the people that are using uh, uh, those that that services are satis satisfied with the, what they feel they need to transportation. Uh, that's the main thing of having uh, everything well done. Let's say. Um, and I would like to point out the thing of the noise. I think that that is something that we don't uh, mostly realize uh, many times when we are very noisy places, I must say. When you go in a ferry, they are pretty, pretty no noisy. It, it, uh, so it, it, is it is almost frightening the fact that there is no noise. You, you feel like it's not moving. Yeah, so so I, I was I was wondering, um, it is it's very important for us, I must say, so having this emission free ferry, uh, emission and noise free ferry, I think it, it is a total uh, different uh, experience of traveling, I must say. But also, I will I will see to the wildlife. I think that in the in the in the Caribbean and in, 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 in our region that there is a strong wildlife uh, at the sea, having this emission free, I think that it will be impact a lot on any wildlife because you know they they get really disturbed by these uh motor uh, vessels going back and forth from uh, beaches and you know even the natural uh um, um uh, areas uh, preserved areas uh they do use diesel engines which actually preserves uh preserves uh, a lot the, the the biodiversity in the seas so it is a uh, added value to having these um uh, emission and noise free ferries. So uh, I just have a curiosity because you said that they were, there's a difference of passengers be between and winter. And I will, uh, it's just a curiosity, uh, why why would that be having more passengers in the, in the summer? Well, this is because in the summer you can see it on the deck, which is not possible during the winter time. Uh, and uh, by not possible, I don't mean that uh, only because it's very cold you cannot sit uh, outside, but also because it's not allowed to sit outside, because in the specific area there is uh, very often ice, uh, so it's uh, pretty dangerous to sit on the deck. So it, there is a, I, I don't know the exact dates that uh, this uh, regulation starts, but uh, they have decided that uh, during winter time the deck will be closed so this is why we have uh, like uh, 30 or 35 more passengers actually more uh, 50 i think more passengers uh, on board during the summertime mm -hmm. so it does not of have course, a ratio this is of course this is before covid 19 right so i don't know what's going on now but uh, 
I hope that this will come back to the initial numbers soon. Mm -hmm. So I, I was going to say, it is not related to the energy then. So the, the it's not because of the vessel cut, whatever. So it's just security on the particular part of the sea that they are running. Okay. Um, uh, I would like you to ask another question before going into the audience questions about the regulatory framework. You said that there is a very big uh, challenge there, I guess, uh, on, uh, into the electrification of ferries around the world. Uh, what what are the, the, the barriers? What do you see that can be improved in that matter? Well, it's not actually bars, it's actually the lack of uh, proper incentives uh, given from uh, the government. Uh, because, as you know, with the electric cars as well, uh, they are far more friendly to the environment. But this is only if uh, the source of the electricity is also uh, environmental friendly. So the governments are still uh, investigating whether this is true and where is uh, the electricity coming from. Uh, and the other thing is that uh, the governments need to provide financial incentives to the operators uh, because, as we said, the cost for the investment in order to buy the electric ferry is quite high and uh, no operator is willing to do this uh, just for the sake of it, of course. They need to have some uh, income from that. So uh, giving uh, financial incentives is uh, very important. Another thing is that uh, the infrastructure should be a prerequisite in the ports and not be up to the operator to construct this because in uh, most of the ports around Europe at uh, this point if you would like to operate an electric ferry this is not possible because there is no charging infrastructure available and if you decide even to fund it yourself, if you're an operator and you have enough money to fund it yourself, then you have to get all the permissions because the, the port is not uh, yours, of course. You have to get the, the land to create the infrastructure, you, get, you have to get the permission, you have to get the, the validation, uh, the authorization, all this stuff, which is very time con consuming and of course, uh, leads leads you to decide not to do it so uh it, it all comes down to incentives that should be provided by the governments mm -hmm. yeah the, we, we do have a question actually about the the charging infrastructures on the ports um it says uh, regarding the assets since it's a high power charge uh for megawatts I assume they say I assume that charging for assets cost is included in the price of the energy supplied. Is it still profitable consider all these costs? Yes, yes, it is. Uh, one reason we decided to have the charging infrastructure only on Sobi is for this reason. Uh, so uh, this way we wouldn't have to pay the same amount twice. And it will also be beneficial, I think I included this in the presentation, to have uh, the operator do the connect, pay the connection fee just once uh, for the charging infrastructure. So uh, all these costs have been included and all the calculations that you, you saw uh, are including these costs. And as I said during my presentation, the, the whole evaluation uh, report is uh, online and available. I can send you the link if you want. And people can go through it and see all the actual numbers and the rationale behind the calculations. Thank you so much. I was wondering if that uh, charging infrastructure could be used by other ferries, uh, other electrical ferries, if they wanted to use them in the future. Uh, you mean technically or uh, legally? Um, I was thinking more operationally, so meaning how many hours would that have to be plugged in uh, and how, you know, in, in, in those terms? Well, uh, yeah, you, you're right about that. During the day, it will be fine, I think, because uh, we have seven trips, up to seven trips, like five to seven trips. So, and the charging lasts about 20 to 35 minutes. So I, there is time for other fares to charge as well. But uh, during the night, yeah, that would be probably a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I'm not uh, a battery person. I'm not, I was not involved in the development of the battery, but I guess there could be some optimization of the charger in order to be able to charge more than one electric ferries. 
at the same time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we do have um, another question regarding the environmental savings. So it said, um, can the environmental savings be included in some carbon markets as a means to finance an investment in uh, for, for such a fleet? Can be included in what? In, um, um, can be included in some carbon markets. Carbon markets? Yeah. I'm not able to answer this question. I think it's uh, more uh, to the environmentalists uh, mm -hmm. to be dedicated. You can send it to me via email and I will make sure to reply to that. Okay, thank you so much. And um, uh, in terms of financing, you said that uh, so all the project was financed and supported by the European Union. Um, in terms of that um, study that you made uh, about possibilities of, um, of um, replicating Ellen in Africa. Uh, did you find any other institution willing to fund or finance uh, the, the, the project? Well, uh, first of all, the, the project was not funded 100% uh, by the Commission. We got uh, 15 million euros of funding. Uh, the research institutes, like uh, the institute I'm representing, were funded by 100%, and the companies were funded by 75 to 80%, depending uh, on its case. So the overall budget was 21 million, and we got the 15 out of it. Now, uh, for the market, uh, for the African market, uh, this was actually an exercise I did during the formulation of the business plan. It was nothing official. We didn't go to them. But I can tell you that after the the completion of the project and the dissemination of the project. Unfortunately, we were planning to have a very huge conference at the end of it, and this was canceled due to COVID. But even though we didn't have it, uh, due to other dissemination actions we had, we have been having many, many uh, questions from many people and uh, requests, actually, not questions, for from operators around the world who are um, uh, thinking of uh, developing uh, the same, uh, replicating, as you said, the ferry. I have received many requests which I forwarded to the operator and the constructor uh, at the Sobe shipyard uh, located on the island. And I think he's currently in the process of uh, developing more uh, ferries, more electric ferries. And most importantly, uh, in my opinion, this is the most important thing, the both both of the companies that were involved in the creation in the development of the battery, uh, Danfoss, uh, which was uh, they were included with a different name I don't remember it right now, but they were bought Le Clancet, which was bought by Danfoss. Uh, they are uh, currently working on the optimization of the battery. So in the next few years, I think we will have uh, much, a lot of uh, e-ferries e uh, in the seas. Mm -hmm. And I hope and think that they will have a higher range than the 22 nautical miles. That would be really, really good, actually. Um, so um, we have a question about batteries. You said, what are the plans? Uh, what, what are the plans for Ellen's original batteries uh, to be replaced? So when would that be happen? Well, uh, as it goes with electric cars as well, it's uh, the plan is to have it replaced in 10 years. And this was actually included in the calculation of the environmental benefits and of the cost uh, for the investment. We took into consideration that we will have to replace the battery every 10 years for a lifetime for the ship of uh, 30 years. So it's more or less every 10 years. Okay. Okay. No, thank you so much. Um, we do have another questions about plans to, to expand uh, electric ferries in the region. But I think uh, we already talked about that, about the repl replicability of the project in, uh, in, in, in Europe and in other parts of the world. I think that um, the possibility of having, um, like of knowing that there is something uh, such as Ellen uh, working and working really, really good in terms of uh, environment and economics and financials um, uh, can give a great idea to uh, our countries in the region. 
Uh, I hope they got really excited <laughs> about this idea. Uh, mainly, um, I and I don't know if um, there's something that, uh, that 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 you would know, but uh, I was willing to ask if you know that uh, any other uh, electrical vessels that may um, be uh, not as big as Ellen that may be around the around the globe working right now because I think that not all of them may need you know to carry so many cars or so many trucks uh, in their backs, but you know something uh, less uh, big than that. There is actually the Norled, which is in uh, operating in Nor Norway. It's a, it was constructed before Ellen. Uh, it has a range of five nautical miles. I mentioned this in the beginning of the presentation. Uh, the dream of uh, the, the maritime uh, people that were involved in the e ferry was uh, based on the on this electric ferry. Uh, this is also still in operation, but you know the range is uh, really limiting. However, for a complex of islands with uh, short uh, routes between them, this would be ideal. And also, there is uh, in the in the in Norway again in the fjord, uh, there is a whole fleet of electric ferries that are uh, operating there. Uh, of course, the range of these uh, ferries is uh, very low. It's like two or three nautical miles, but still, it uh, serves the specific need very, very good. And the, in the this is also a very protected uh, area in terms of uh, of the environment. So uh, there is no noise, there is no CO two emissions, and uh, this is uh, very important to have this fleet. Uh, there, are, I, I am aware of many other attempts around Europe. Uh, I'm sure that in China and Japan, in shipyards at this point, they are uh, uh, starting or uh, finalizing the development and the construction of similar electric ferries. And also, there are plans uh, for uh, uh, for bigger ships for. Uh, container ships to be based on electricity. But in that case, I guess that, not I guess, I know they will not be uh, dependent only on electricity. There will be a backup energy engine uh, because it's a very different thing to have a, a route of uh, 22 nautical miles and uh, going from one continent to another. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, to be honest, I think that uh, if I were to conclude and make only one conclusion at the end that would be that uh, electric ferries are ideal for uh, small and uh, medium uh, range routes uh, you know in europe or in the caribbean connecting uh, connecting islands between them or to the mainland and on the other hand uh, electric combined with electricity combined with uh, either diesel engine or hybrid is uh, the most environmental friendly solution now Mm -hmm. Okay, so thank you so much, Annie, for, for all the information, for being with us today, for taking the time to explain uh, everything uh, for us. It is pretty new for us all, the electric ferry. I hope this will change slowly and we will see more electrical ferries running in, in our region. Uh, again, thank you so much, everyone, for being here today. I hope it was interesting for you as it was for me and um hope to see you back uh, again next uh in uh, next month i guess i uh, know at the end of this month um this um recording as well as um the the other videos that um annie showed us and the website will be on our website uh, movelatam dot uh, org so thank you so much in again for your presentation and your time. Thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation. It was a real honor. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.